The program is State Affairs. Senator Monsurat Sumonu, it's good to have you on State Affairs. It's nice to be here. Thank you. It's a tough time, some think, that this time is not 2015. This is 2019. Bisi Laka, Teslim Folani, against Senator Monsurat Sumonu. How well will it be at the end of the day? To me, I don't see it to be a tough time. Mm. It's just business as usual. Because um, I've been in this kind of period in 2011, also in 2015. So therefore, 2019 should not be a different one. I mean, the contestant that you have, that I have been having in 2011, 2015, I would not say they're as bad as what we're having now. You know, this time you are contesting against the former Senate leader. Yeah. I hope you know. Yes, I know. Just slim for Larry. Is yeah. it not formidable enough to scare you? Nothing will ever scare me. Oh. Because um, all that you need to do and what people will expect from you is for you to demonstrate that you have the skills and ability to perform the duties, to be a senator. And um, your antecedent will speak for you anyway. I mean, when I first came into the country in 2010-11, I thank God that my antecedents were for me. And um, I was, um, I contested the election, I won. Then um, I became the speaker. So being a speaker for the first time, and even coming in the country, I mean, coming into the country in eight months, nine mm -hmm. months, and um, trying to manage a house for four years where you have 19, 19 um, oppositions against 13 ruling parties and you're having only one female and um, th 31 male. So obviously, that antecedent now roll into 2015. And uh, being in 2015, because the people of your Central Senatorial District considered my antecedent and have that belief in me, then they voted for me to become their senator. Now again, this is me to present uh, myself to them, give account of my stewardship. As the incumbent? Yeah, as an incumbent, yeah. Oh. Now, tell me something. What was it like being the speaker for your state house of assembly for four years, the only female in that house of assembly? What was it like? Yeah, um, I'll say it gives me, I mean, it gave me the experience mm -hmm. of leading people. And also, because we work together as a family, one family, so that as well showed me the kind of politicians that we have in Nigeria. Because remember that I said that uh, I just came into the country then, having been in the UK for about 32 years. So it, it even gave me, I mean, that motivation mm -hmm. for me to be able to see where and what you can do with your people, gaining more experience politically. And you have been a symbol of leadership, especially representing uh, the female folk in this part of the world. The first woman to be the speaker for your state house of assembly, the first woman to be a senator, in all your state and these qualities keep you in good standing has your time in the senate somehow affected your political behavior no it hasn't because of my what always crossed my mind and the being my thinking all the time is that because i had the opportunity being the first female speaker and also the first female Senator in your central, central district, I should not let my people down. And also that um, female, so that I will, I mean, I will serve as um, a role model for them. Mm -hmm. So that we know that um, what a man can do, then um, a woman can even do it much better. Have you done it better? Yeah, I have. My, what we have been discussing now actually says that, you see, when I was a speaker, 
there was no rank of for four years. And that's to some people was a flaw on your own part. How? Because you allowed the governor yeah. to have a free reign. Never. I will, I will say no, a capital no. Even your this was the time that the governor bullied them. No, they would never tell you that. Because remember that um, we do not have a house where you have fools and idiots that would not be able to speak for themselves. We believe that um, we, are, we are there representing our people and we must be seen representing them accordingly and in accordance. So not seeing us fighting ourselves doesn't mean, but we're only being matured. Okay. You know, that is maturity. And how do we need to present ourselves to people? Is it until when we start throwing ourselves out of the windows? That cordial relationship you were able to build with yeah. Governor Abiola Ajimobi, yeah. to some was telling, but all of a sudden you fell out with that same governor. What happened? Okay. I mean, now I know you're going to go there. But what, what actually happened is, you know, when you're talking of governance, it is quite different from politics. Okay. Governance, as soon as you, just as we, we agreed with ourselves when I was a speaker, that everybody should forget anything political. We should face governance. We should try to work hand in hand with the executives to move Ohio State forward. So, but people seeing that, and like, I mean, if you, if you go back to our records then, if I'm not mistaken, I think we had over 289 motions in three years. And also, I think we had about 85 bills apart from the executive bills. So we, 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 we played maturity. We always have one-on-one -on -one conversation with the governor. We have meetings so before we even go to the plenary. Look at what they want. We'll be able to advise them to say that, oh, why can't you do it this way? Why can't you do this? I believe that is the way things should work. So how come you could not then, take this understanding into politics? You no, were no, able no, no, to no. take it into governance. We, we believe, yeah, we, in, into governance. Remember that um, we had three political parties. Then we have the ACN that becomes APC. Yeah. We have Accord. Then we have PDP. So it is not possible for you to take that kind of governance into political so because what? we have different ideologies. So what happened? So now between Ajimobi? me, you want to know what me. What happened between you exactly. and Ajimobi? So now when I came in, when I came in into, I mean after my, the end of my tenure, and I had to go into signing, um, all of, I mean everybody will have their own interest. And everyone will have to support one person or the other. But at the end of the day, whoever that secured the ticket, then go for for the election, yeah. which I did. Then, you were um, not his candidate, right? Yeah, at the beginning. He preferred a commissioner in his administration. Not that he preferred, but he has interest. And there's no harm in having interest. Okay. So that's where we started. But what actually made me to leave APC, because as I've always been telling people, I will never go on ear to discuss about anybody's personality. You understand? I'm here to discuss about, just give account of my stewardship and let people know why I really want to go back. What I've done, what I'm doing, and what I will do. So in a way, if you ask me, why, why did I leave APC? That's what we want to know. Mm. No, what happened between me and the governor, I am not going to discuss that here. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk with anyone's personalities. Okay, why did you leave the APC? Okay, that is um, because, I mean, to me, I see myself fighting for the masses, right? When it first started, when I was um, a speaker, 
we could not conduct local government election that time because there were cases in court. But towards the end of our tenure, they resolved the matter. But we didn't have much time then. I think it was just about two months to the end of the tenure. With the belief that um, if God give us the grace to come back, then we're going to conduct local government election. Everyone knows that local government is a tier that actually deal with the grassroots. And the more so, we, I was the first speaker the old country then that actually passed local, local government autonomy. And sadly, we are still yet to have uh, I mean, because an we, autonomous we, local government no, system. No, because we didn't have the figure. We, we never have the figure. figure. Yeah, I think we, need, we needed um, 22 years at that time. We were able to get 21. Someone just dropped out. So we couldn't um, well, then, even, if even, if, did, even if he did, did didn't sign it. Yeah, exactly. He didn't sign it. So, then when I now go to Senate, I believe that um, I took it that the struggle continues. So, if you're watching the Senate procedures, you will see that it was me actually that actually, first of all, raised the motion about local government and autonomy. But what I was told then was, oh, we we'll now have to constitute a committee for constitutional amendment which um, happened to be one of them. So we started, then um, Senate passed it, run concurrently with the um, House of Reps. Mm. So I was thinking that, oh yeah, if all your state cannot have the local government autonomy, then it will be much better, or conduct our elections. We did not conduct the election in our first year, then the second year, we people they advertise for people to come and collect interest forms. We thousands of people did, and um, lots of people claimed to have went as far as going to to loan some money from the bank, selling their properties to obtain farms. They did took months and months before we could have the screening. And that's... After the screening, no result, no outcome of the screening was given to, to them. Did you take the, that up with the governor? No, I, I mean, I don't have to take it up with, but I took it up with the party chairman. In the state? Chief, yeah, Chief but, Akin, okay. But, but we know what goes on in Nigeria. The governors run the parties. Well, to me... I believe in party supremacy. So that is why... But that's on paper. Is there anything like party supremacy in Nigeria? Yeah, but I mean, we have to start from somewhere anyway. Whether it's on paper or not, we still have to start from somewhere. And that's why we're starting. So we, I and I went to speak with the party chairman, and um, he said, oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We soon sort it out. So I didn't. Then all of a sudden, we just had that... Um, so people have been selected and that they're going to conduct the, the election one day, which they did. You could, I mean, I believe you're in town then. When you saw some people staging protests, you know, they went to the party secretariat to stage protest. I phoned again, I talked to them to say, oh, this is not good enough. But hey, nothing was done. You were, seen, not, you, you were seen as opposing the party. Yeah, and I didn't opposing yeah, the and not, of the party. Exactly, and I didn't want to be seen that way. But you were seen that way. Oh, yeah. Because you were part of those that formed the Unity Forum. Yeah, that's right. And the Unity no, Forum. It, it didn't start. No, unity Forum have not started there. Yeah, I know. I, towards, I, it got to the point of forming the Unity Forum. Yeah, because of the Congresses. Yeah. You know, the Congresses now came, came in again. Then, oh, we just saw. Congresses were hijacked too. Yeah. In a, in a way, in a way. <laughs> who so, the Congress? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But I believe, I believe that. I uh, know who I jumped the Congress. You can you say. Tell you? you tell me. Did you know tell, I jumped the Congress? Tell me what. Did you know I jumped the Congress? No, what I what I'm after is that the Unity Forum we obtained farms, and um, we were expecting the governor wasn't the one that conducted 
the congresses, they sent some people from the headquarters which they never cooperated with everybody. The national secretariat of the party, they were the one that came to the, to the state to conduct. But hey, what can we do? So after struggling, tried to explain ourselves, we went to see the national chairman. We were everywhere, but no one listened to us. And the only option was to leave the party. That is it. I never knew you could be a struggler in the politics. You are learning the lesson like every Nigerian <laughs> politician, right? Yeah, but I mean, sometimes you learn in a very hard way, isn't it? Oh, you've learned yeah. in a hard way, right? No, for what actually happened as at that time, because, um, you know, fighting for your people, you know, it's just to say that, oh, things should be done in the right way. If it is not, then what can you do? Has your innocence been violated politically? You came in as an innocent person in the UK. No, no. What have I mean, you become? No, I mean, I'm civil so. Are you coping with the politicians? I'm coping very well. They because, can be terrible, right? Yeah, but no, but I'm happy. Because, you see, then everyone, we need people that can speak on their behalf. They need people that they can trust and see that, oh, if we go to her or go to him, he or she will listen. And be able to take our cases on board. Uh, Senator Mansouraj, yeah? you have played your politics. You have made a point. Yeah. You see, when most of the Southwest senators yeah. stood with Buhari, yeah. stood with the Tinubu camp, yeah. you took your own independent decision. Yeah. You stood where you wanted to stand. Yeah. And today, you are the Chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. Yeah. Should I say well done? Say what? Should I say well done? No, what do you have to say? The well done. Well done for what? Because um, if I'm the, no, I mean, I, I did not become the chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs because of anything, but the fact remains that, um, and I will never, ever stand, I only stand for the truth, stand by the truth all the time. What actually, I became the chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs was because I'm, the only diaspora that is um, in the Senate. And uh, remember that I was once a British diplomat, that I used to work for the British government, which I did for 22 years. So those, those are the things that made them to give me the chairman Senate Committee on Friends. It was not a compensation. Not, not compensation, and it was without prejudice, but because of my antecedent. I mean, if they give me, if it is because of anything, they would have given me petroleum or give me works, but well, I don't know anything about it. affairs, it's a big committee. No, you only, the way you say it, the way you say it, because if you're talking of, um, talking about, I mean, if you're talking of foreign affairs, everyone would think, oh, foreign affairs. But there are so many things in it that you need to consider. Remember that um, during the time when Nigeria and um, UK were arguing about um, the prisoner transfers, and when um, the reporters claimed that 30,000 Nigerians have been deported from the UK, which wasn't true, I had to, to, to lead um, the committee to UK, where we sat down with the British authority, the Home Office, you know, we look at the foreign policy, look at the agreement that we have signed to say why. We visited so many detention centers. And I can tell you that we only met about 20, 25 Nigerians. And as at that time, the flight that actually came in, of course, no airplane would be able to take 30,000. So when the flight came, we only saw just about 10 people, 20. Because they need to prepare their documentations.